Good morning, brethren. Um, I'm happy to welcome you to the first Sunday service in the month of May, which is our Thanksgiving service. So we thank God who has been merciful um, and faithful in keeping us till this time. And we believe that he's, he will continue to keep and sustain us even beyond this month in Jesus' name. So this is, um, we are in our Sunday school session and we will start by taking a prayer. So shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much um, for this beautiful day. Thank you for launching us into the month of May. Thank you for your love that sustained us you know, through January to this time. We are so grateful. We are grateful for your mercy, for your kindness, for your healing, for everything you've been to us. May your name be praised in Jesus' name. Even as together we study your word, we pray that you grant illumination in Jesus' name. The Bible says the entrance of your word given life. I pray that we receive life and understanding from this study in Jesus' name. From Jesus' name I pray for it. Amen. Um, last month in our Sunday school, we considered the, the theme adultery. And that was really beautiful. This month, we'll be looking at something quite different. We'll be looking at the race. The theme is the race. And specifically this um, week, today, we'll focus on heaven's race. Heaven's race. Right. We'll start with the guide scripture, which is um, from Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. We encourage you to please get your Bibles and get your Sunday school manual so you can follow through as we go through the study together. So Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, I read, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. I believe this is a familiar scripture, and this we're going to take up from this morning. Um, so, like I said, heaven's race is the topic um, before us today. So first of all, we want to understand what heaven's race is. Um, we've read from our scripture some beautiful skill sets. The race is not to the swift, you know, um, battle is not so strong. You have wise. You know, the wise don't always get the bread and very beautiful skill sets. But then we'll know that these skills, however beautiful they are, is not enough to get us to the finish line when it comes to us running the heavenly race. Those that have the skill sets do not. It doesn't really mean that they will be the ones succeeding. If you remember Goliath? Goliath was a champion. He was strong, yet. He then won the battle. David won. You know, we have ample examples in the Bible. So what exactly does heaven race, you know, look like? And how do we have to have the understanding? What is the nature of heaven race? The heaven race that I said before us is one that is not one off. Unlike the normal race, 100, 100 meters race that will run within one hour, within 20 minutes, 10 minutes, even 5 minutes, you're done. For heaven race is an all-time race. It's a race that you begin once you accept Jesus Christ and it will continues right to whether a man dies or when Jesus Christ, the Christ comes. So understanding the nature of the race is also very important. Then the, the reward is quite different from the physical race that we're used to. For the physical race that, yeah, that, that athletes run, in, um, run, they receive a medal, they receive a prize. But for heavenly race, we know it's an eternal life. It's an eternal life that is secured. You know, so heavenly race is quite important and very significant. Something we get to run, and that's why we're going to focus on this this morning um, together. So, like we've said, beautiful skill sets like being wise, being sweet is not enough. What do we need? We need understanding. We have to understand how to run the race, and of course, we need the grace of God to be successful. So we'll start by looking at the first point. There are very beautiful points here this morning that will help us understand the nature of this race and what we need to, to get to the finish line strong. The first one is, um, it says, heaven's race starts from the moment you give your life to Jesus. It starts from the point, you know, and that point, your name is written in the book of life. So I believe um, you have given your life to Jesus. If you haven't, it's quite simple because a mark Chapter 16, verse 16, just says, all you need is to believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him as the Lord and Savior. You, for, you forsake your sin and you embrace 
the new life in Jesus. Yes, as soon as you do that, then the heaven race began. You've been enlisted among the athletes, you know, that are running this race. Right? So it starts from there, and then, like I said, it continues the race you run for all time while you're on earth, you know, right to when a man dies or when Jesus Christ comes to rapture us, you know, to glory. So that is the nature of the race. It's very easy to join the race by God's grace. As you have the opportunity now, you can even join it as I speak. Right. So right from the start point, once you have given your life to Jesus Christ, then your name is in the book of life. Your name is in the book of life. If we read um, Philippians chapter 4 verse 3, the Bible says, uh, I'll just quickly read this. It said, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, the moment you believe, your name has been enlisted, and you are in the book, your name is in the book of life. And that's the same with you know, as many Christians, many believers as are all over the world. And then I want you to know from this first point that you are already in the race and your name is in the book of life. The second point is that as soon as anyone quits the race, the name is equally blotted out of the book of life. First point is that very easy, give your life to Jesus Christ, confess him and your name is in the book of life. But then this name can also be removed. Um, I know there are lots of um, preachers out there. I've actually been in one of the ministrations before where a minister actually said, Oh, once you're a Christian, once you're saved, you're saved for life. You know, once a prince, a prince, even if you mess up, even if you poo and you, you know, you, 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 you desecrate yourself, that you still remain a prince. That's not true. Today we'll learn that and we'll read from the scripture so you know this that if your name is in the book of life, if you do not, you know, understand and do what is required of you, your name can be removed. It can be blotted out. Um, quickly join me as we read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. And let's see specifically what the scripture is saying about, um, about remaining in, remaining, um, about our names remaining in the book of life. So we have Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. It says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So you see, your name is in the book of life, but if any man draws back, then God will have no pleasure. He won't be pleased. And if he's not pleased, if heaven is not pleased with you, then your name will be removed. And so it's our responsibility to continue to live a life of faith and to continue to live daily committed and ensuring that we keep our name in the book of life. Again, when we read Revelation chapter 3 verse 5, you know, that is also very significant and as an eye opener. It said, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. So the names of those that remain in the book of life are those who continue to run, those who run up to the finish line, those who overcome, those who make it, they are the ones whose name will remain. But what happens to those who don't make it? If you're not an overcomer, then that means you're a quitter. And believe you me, so many people are quitting, um, you know, this day. So many people are quitting, and more will still quit. Because the Bible says, in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. But that should not be you. That should not be you quitting. You should be able to stay strong and determined to, to be among the overcomers that uh, we've read about in Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. So what have we established? Do not quit, quit, keep running. If you quit, then heaven is not pleased with you. Bible says, he that put his hand in the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. Do not quit, brethren. Can you say to someone close to you, do not quit, keep running. And God will strengthen and uphold us all in Jesus' name. The next thing to understand about this um, heavenly race is that it is peculiar. It is very personal. You see, as much as your father loves you so much, as much as your mother loves you so much, they cannot run the race for you, kid. They can't run the race for, race for you, my brother. 
you have to run it yourself because on the last day we will stand before God personally to give account of how we spent our lives. So it is peculiar, it is personal. Besides the fact that it's personal, it requires us with joy and gladness bearing our cross. And what do I mean by cross? Simply put, cross is everything you have to endure in the name of Christ. Everything you have to endure in the name of Christ. Sometimes, you know, there are so many jobs out there, but not everything you can take because you feel like if I do this job, God will not be honored. Or there's some gifts, there's some friends you might want you, you know, you really desire to, to flock around with, but you know that this will take you from Christ. You know, you're denying yourself and pulling and choosing Christ, you know, instead of all this pleasure, is your cross. You're taking the point yourself and saying, I'm going to do it differently. And sometimes you can even be in form of affliction. You know, of course, we're on the race and the devil is not happy. So the devil will keep afflicting or even, you know, throwing some, um, some things to us to discourage us. But when you decide and say, no, I'm going to stay strong and continue to the end, it could be your cross. So with this race, you're required to go by your cross, you know, bearing it and enduring and looking unto Jesus for strength. And he will see you through. You know, you do it with joy and he will see you through. Another peculiarity to this race is that it's a very narrow race. It's a narrow road. You see, there is no room for a maneuvering. We can't do it our way. Because this race is very structured. We have Christ as the center. The Bible says, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So we can look up to celebrities. Some look up to celebrities. Some even want to do it in their own way. They look up to themselves and they want to do it in their own fashion. But no, that's not for an athlete who is in this race. An athlete who is in this race, we look up to Jesus will familiarize himself or herself with the word of God and want to know what exactly does God requires of me. You know, Jesus run, ran the race and he finished it. So he is the perfect model. If we do want to finish, we have to continue to look up to him, read the scripture and um, look to him for inspiration and strength. And we'll read one Bible verse here that will just help um, illuminate this, um, this um, point. To our hearts we we'll read um, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and here it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin we do so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us so that's very very instructive it says, for us to run this race, we have to go light. We have to lay aside every sin, every weight. We can't go with lies. We can't run the race, you know, with, with, with ungodly friends. We can't run the race with, with, um, with um, lust or even adultery. You know, you can't, you can't have sin and be on track. Sin will distract you. Sin will take you off the track and you will surely lose focus. And so we've been instructed to run the race with patience, to run the race with focus, leaving everything, even self. You know, saying to yourself, I, I'm not here to please myself, I'm here to please my master. And I'm letting go, I'm allowing God to have the fullness of me. That is what the race is about. It's a very narrow road, like we've said, there is no room to take any extra, you know, along. Pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The next point, it talks about, it said, there are many distractions on the roots of this race. Oh, yes. Joseph will tell you this. Joseph would have been distracted. He would have been distracted by um, citizenship in Egypt. Remember, he was a slave. And Potiphar's wife, you know, um, Potiphar's wife promised him so much. Potiphar's wife promised him so much. But Joseph chose God's, chose to be on God's side. He said, no, I'm not going to go for nothing except God. He said, I will not do this and sin against my God. So that is him actually bearing because rather than, you know, enjoy whatever Potiphar's, whatever my master's wife will give me, I would rather go to prison, you know, and stay with God than compromise my faith. So there are distractions. There will be distractions on the road. The devil will bring so many things, you know, to tempt us. It could even be love for money. You know, it could be, it could be, um, you know, there, there's so much that will catch up. It could be drinking, you know, it could be women, it could be, it could be anything. We should be determined 
that this race is something we must run to a finish and we should refuse to allow any distraction. If we allow any distraction, we will be lost and it might be difficult getting on track. Oh, Ananias and Sapphira, they allowed lies into their lives. And remember, it was an instant death. And of course, you might say, oh, God, we're not, God, God is not that wicked. Oh, that was a dispensation of uh, maybe, um, that was not the dispensation of, dispensation of grace. Uh, I believe God will. Yes, but it's true. There's some Christians, so-called Christians, who come to church, but they're off the track. Because the truth of the matter is they've allowed other things to entangle with them and these have actually kept them off focus. So we shouldn't allow distraction in any bit at all. We should remain focused and we should allow God to um, we should allow God to help us to run the race to the end. Demas as well is also very instructive. I believe you know it. Demas loved the world, he embraced the world, and he was lost in the world. Pray God will help us. The last point is those who endure the race from the beginning to the end are called overcomers. They gain the ultimate salvation and are decorated in white as winners. Right, in white as winners. So um, those who endure, not the quitters, those who endure. We talk of endurance here because indeed the race may not be smooth. Indeed, you know, there may be some ups and downs. But you know, like the disciples, the disciples were so determined. Oh, they said, what shall separate me from the love of Christ? Is it persecution? Is it hardship? Is it struggling? And that should be our, that should be, that should be the verse we are running with every day. As we say to ourselves, yes, we are facing the struggling today. Yes, we are facing that today. Yes, we have to endure this today. You know, yes, things are not really going all oh, the way we would have thought. We are not really enjoying the comfort, you know, we would have, would have, we would have um, wanted. But we will stick to the rule. Paul ran the race. The disciples ran the race. And in fact, at some point, Paul said, I have won, I have run the race. I've come to the end. Before me set a crown. He was so sure. He ran the race. Brethren, be encouraged by those uh, patriarchs, those who have gone ahead. People have finished this race ahead. People have gone ahead and they finished. You too can finish. You know, we can get to that point where we will be welcome as overcomers. You know, it is doable, it is very possible, and by God's grace, we're going to do it. We've so far talked about the heaven race. We've had understanding of how this race works. That this race is not, is a personal race. This race, we are running in a very narrow road with Christ as our master. We have to acquaint ourselves, we have to understand, we have to, we have to play by the rules. We have to read the word of God. You know, to daily have strength and, and, and freshness, you know, to go, to keep going, despite whatever we be going through. We know, we know that we will bear our cross with joy. We are not going to complain. We are not going to quit. You know, we are not going to allow anything distract us. Lot looked, Lot's wife looked back because of worldliness. She couldn't let go of everything she had in Sodom. She looked back. But you should not be that quitter. You should strive to the very end. And as you determine this in your heart, I believe heaven's grace will support you and carry you through in Jesus' name. So that's the that's the that's the um, the study for today. Heaven's grace. Um, do not be a quitter. It's very important. It will be good if we all run the race and we overcome us. The love of many will wax cold in the end time. But make sure your love for God never wax cold. And may the Lord keep us strong. May the Lord keep us stronger by the day in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Almighty Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for enlisting us in this race. We thank you because it is your grace that has kept and sustained us, God, even till this point. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because that grace is enough to, to, to carry us through to the very end in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we know that you are ever available to help. But we have our roles to play. We have to let go of sin. We have to let go of worldly pleasures. I pray, Lord Jesus, that every sin, every, every weight that, that holds us bound, you will help us to shake off. And you will keep our eyes 
off you keep our eyes on the cross you keep our eyes on the heavenly prize in the name of jesus father lord god i pray for those who are struggling in one way or the other i pray that you would set them free and you will you will put them back on track in jesus name we thank you mighty father because beyond what we can ever ask you have done for in jesus name have we prayed amen now we'll proceed to the prayer session Praise the Lord. So we'll begin the service with um, a prayer session. I hope you all had a great time with the Sunday School um, teaching. Um, so today is our Thanksgiving service, so we have so much to thank God for. We'll start by thanking the Almighty God. The Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 2, it says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He has done for me. So this is our God who has kept us alive. You know, from January to May, I believe you have so much to thank God for. So why don't you join me in praising this Almighty God, in celebrating His wonderful deeds, in celebrating His awesomeness in our lives, in our families, in our marriages, in our church. Let's worship Him, let's thank Him and say, Lord, we celebrate you this morning. We thank you, we adore you for life. We thank you for sparing every one of us, every one of us, you know, for our families, for our church, that we are not counted among the dead. Let's worship his holy name. Let's thank him for increasing us. Rather than decreasing, we are increasing. The Lord added three babies to us last month. It is, it is, it is his doing and it is marvelous in our sight. Let's celebrate this almighty God. Let's thank him. You can do so by kneeling down. You can sing songs of praises to him. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You have been redeemed from death. You have been redeemed from here and from, from diseases. The Lord Almighty has redeemed you. So let's worship him. Let's thank him. Let's not forget his goodness. Let's reflect on the one on the answer prayers. Let's reflect on his healing. Let's reflect on his on, on his blessings in numerous forms. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Let's, let's thank the Almighty God for sustaining the church, even at this time, that the church is not swallowed in this pandemic, that the Lord is keeping the church going. Let's thank God for our ministers, for our pastors. Let's thank God for his fresh anointing in, in their lives. Let's thank God for the word of God that still reaches out to us. Even though we are not, we don't come together, you know, to, to hear the word in church. But the word is reaching us in our different homes. Let's worship him that we are not experiencing droughts of the word. Let's thank him. Let's thank God for the technical units, the choir, everyone God is using to make sure the church is running. Let's worship his holy name. Let's bless him. Let's adore him. Let's not forget his goodness. Let's thank him. In Jesus' name have we prayed. In the Sunday school, we, we looked at um, heaven's race and we actually learned that we should not quit because there is a price that awaits, there is a welcome, a special welcome that, that awaits overcomers. Let's pray. You and I are still in the race today. Let's pray. May I not be a quitter in the name of Jesus. May I not be a quitter in Jesus' name. Why don't you pray this prayer? So many people started the race, but they are no more today. So many people started the race, but they've said they've, they've, they've quitted and they've gone to the world. Remember Demas. We talked about Demas in the Sunday school. That Demas loved the world. He abandoned the things of God. He went into the world. Let's pray. Father, may I finish well in the name of Jesus. May I finish well. The Bible says, unto God who is able to keep our feet from falling. Let's pray that God will keep our feet from falling. Through everything we experience, we go through in life, may I not give up. You know, like the disciples, like the disciples who will say, what shall separate us from Christ? Is it suffering? Is it affliction? Is it hunger? Let's pray that through whatever experience in life, Father, help me to finish well. Help me to get to the finish line. May I not be a quitter in the name of Jesus, that I will receive the welcome. Welcome, my faithful servant, from you in Jesus' name. Let's pray the prayer. I pray the Lord will answer us in Jesus' name. Um, let's pray this prayer as well. We, we learned also um, in the Sunday school that there are, there are, there are, um, the, cro the road is very narrow and we have to bear the cross without allowing any extra, any extra um, weight. So let's pray to the mighty God that the Lord Almighty will rid us of every extra weight that we're bearing. Weight, we're talking of sin. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, it says, lay aside every weight and the sin with those so easily beset us. So why don't you cry to the Almighty God today that Father deliver me from this sin that keeps, that, that, that I just can't let go. It could be lying. 
Remember, lying actually took the life of um, Ananias and Sapphira. So pray that Father deliver me from lies, deliver me from jealousy, deliver me from adultery, deliver me from fornication, from everything, even from sinful friends, that the Lord Almighty will set us free from every little fox that can destroy our vine, that will take us off the track in the name of Jesus. Why don't you pray? This heaven's race is something we must finish. Let's not be among those that quit. Let's pray that the Lord God will take from us everything that will take heaven from us in the name of Jesus. The Lord God will have mercy on us. He will make us light and will help us to be focused in the name of Jesus. Finally, as we end the prayer, let's pray that the Lord Almighty will go with us in this May. In Isaiah, he said to in Isaiah chapter 45, he said to Cyrus, that is Cyrus who I will, um, whose right hand I will hold, I will go before you and level all mountains. Let's pray that the God Almighty will go before us in the month of May. He will level all mountains, he will fight for us, he will fight our battles in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because you are merciful. We thank you because your majestic hand of God has carried us right from January and has brought us to me. We thank you so much for life. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for sustaining us, God, in every way. We are grateful. May your name be praised in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we pray even in the month of May. I pray that you will spread your wings over us. Your feathers will continue to carry us through. For every obstacle, every mountain where you will level, and Father, Lord, just go, you just continue to keep us in sound health and peace. May you help us, God, not to fall off the race in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for everything you've done. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen. And now we will go into the praise and worship session. Brethren, you know it's the Thanksgiving service. Let's dance, get ready to dance, and praise the Almighty God as we invite the choir to lead us in an awesome time of worship and praise in His presence. May God accept our worship and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
much.
take our congregational hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord my Father. It's hymn number six. Hallelujah. <laughs> wonderful Sunday in the presence of our God and today happens to be our Thanksgiving Sunday and God has been faithful like the choir sang. He's a faithful God, he has kept you, he has kept me, he has been kind to us and he has been merciful. He's an awesome God indeed. His mercies they endure it forever. We bless your name Lord. Thank you for another wonderful day like this that you have made. We worship and bow before your throne today. Blessed, blessed be your name. Father, we thank you for, you know, how you've started with us this morning. Awesome time in Sunday school. Wonderful praise and worship. Daddy, you are indeed our God. Uh, that is time for you to reach out to us. You know, the entrance of your word brings life, Lord. 
Daddy, as your word come forth this morning, let it achieve purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Glorify yourself, Lord. Reach out to your children. Let your word transform our life. Let it change us for good as your children. Daddy, we bless your name. Every way we are going to thank you today. Daddy, please accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name. We give you praise. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Once again, I want to welcome you to the service today. We bless God that you have tuned in. And as you watch, may you be blessed. Awesome Sunday today is. Our faithful God has kept us to see today and this very moment. Daddy, we bless your name. You know, today our sermon is going to really be an interesting one. And now we, uh, in course of the, the, the message, let you know what the topic is about. But we are all children of God. And as children of God, not just children of God, I say as genuine children of God, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we need to make effort to live, to think, and act the Christ in us. You know, the Bible says, by their fruit, you shall know them. And brethren, heaven-bound children of God are in this world, but not of the world. You know, it's recorded in John chapter 17, verse 4 and verse 17, the New King James Version. 14 says, I have given them your word. That is Jesus Christ. And the world has hated them. Why? Because they are not of the world. You and I are not of this world. And Jesus Christ said, just as I am not of the world. And verse 17 says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. God's word is indeed truth. The simple message this Thanksgiving Sunday is a stranger in the land. A stranger in the land. You see, salvation qualifies us as indigent of heaven and strangers here on earth. You remember Paul saying in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, in James Version, he said, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, the will of God is for you to give thanks in everything. You know, the Bible is recorded in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus consigning you, consigning me. And why here on earth Jesus Christ taught us to be thankful? Jesus Christ himself was thankful to God. And this is exemplified when he thanked God for answered prayers. Sometimes we pray, and if God answers prayer, we usually will thank him. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayer. Jesus Christ actually also gave us this example. Remember in John chapter 11, verse 41. John chapter 11, verse 41. The, the, the account of Lazarus. You know, when Jesus Christ eventually got to the tomb, he did instruct them. He told them to take away the stone from the place where Lazarus was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have had me. That is an example of Jesus Christ giving thanks for answered prayer. Again, you see another example where Jesus Christ thanked God. You know, we just say, when we pray, we say, thank you for provision, thank you for journey mercy. Jesus Christ actually thanked God for provision. If you look at John chapter 6, verse uh, 11, in the NIV version, when Jesus was to feed the multitude, Jesus Christ took the loaf, he gave thanks, and he distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. I also did the same with the fish. And even if you recall the Last Supper, he gave thanks before breaking the bread. So you see Jesus Christ exemplifying the, 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 the act of giving thanks. You see, when he sent the disciples out, and when they eventually came back with good testimony, 
Oh, Jesus Christ rejoiced. And it's recorded in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, New King James Version. He rejoiced at their testimony. And in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes, that is the innocent newcomers. Even so, Father, for so it seems good in your sight. So that is just three pointers or three examples or three instances that Jesus Christ gave thanks. And we are followers of Christ. The Bible says in everything we should give thanks. Because obviously help of things that happen to us, help usually come from above. Our eyes are up. Our eyes are on him. If you look at Psalm 123 verse 1. Psalm 123 verse 1. Unto you, the psalmist say, unto you I lift up my eyes. O you who dwell in heavens. And if you look at Psalm 121, verse 1 to 2, this time I also New King James Version, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where come my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You see, as God's children, we, we enjoy heaven's help here on earth because we are citizens of heaven and strangers here on earth. We are strangers in the land. And brethren, when help comes from above, it impacts you here on earth. And no stranger takes that for granted. And as God's children, we don't take help from above for granted. Because our eyes are on God, heaven comes, helps us, helps come from heaven to us. And you see, one of our strange acts here on earth, remember when I started, I said every genuine children of God, or I said genuine ch child or children of God, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we need to make effort to live, think, and act the Christ in us. And you can see Christ exemplifying that we should give thanks. So that was why I said one of our strange acts here on earth is thanksgiving. You see, thanksgiving usually will be provoked each time God makes us glad and causes us to laugh. And this morning, I want us to consider, you know, the following impacts for our admonition and encouragement for us to thank God. One of such impacts is when God amazes you and when God fills you with laughter. You see, thank God when he amazes you. Or feed you with laughter. You remember the song we sing, Amazing God, you are. You are the same today and forever. Ancient of day, you are. Almighty God is our amazing God. Is the only one who can amaze us and fill our life with laughter. And if you see the psalmist said in Psalm 126, verse 2 to 3, the New Living Translation, we were, you remember when God liberated his own from captivity, they had a testimony. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. Brethren, may you sing for joy in the mighty name of Jesus. You that is watching and listening to me this morning, may you sing for joy. This month of May, you will have cause and God will cause you to sing for joy in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, they testified, they sang. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And you know what? And the other nation said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. May that be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. And they declared, yes, the Lord has indeed done amazing things for us. What joy. Brethren, you that is listening to me, that is watching me for wherever you are this morning, I pray in this month of May, God will do more amazing things for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And you know, beside you saying it, Others will see it and glorify God for you in the mighty name of Jesus. We all remember Sarah. It got to a stage. Sarah declared, when God amazed you, you will, you, you, will, you will move to declaration. You will declare the goodness of God upon your life, upon the testimony that he has given you. God amazed Sarah. He gave Sarah a testimony. 
And Sarah did declare in Genesis chapter 21, verse 6, the New Living Translation. And Sarah declared, God has brought me laughter. Not just bringing me laughter, all who hear about this will laugh with me. Sarah did have a testimony. At that age, when all hope is lost, when you've been written off, when you, people think they've completed your chapter, when situation where man thought this is your end, brethren, that is where God begins. At that age, he gave Sarah a testimony, and Sarah did declare. And he caused Sarah to laugh. He brought laughter to Sarah. And everyone who heard of it, they laughed with Sarah. And you know my prayer, as we thank God this month of May, the Lord will bring you laughter, not just laughter, good and great enough laughter that those who will hear about it will laugh with you in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. You see, these are some of the things that, you know, when help comes from heaven, the manifestation here on earth, the amazement, the feeling. May God amaze each and every one of us this month of May. You see, when you overcome, when you survive that which is planned, when I say which is planted or devised to destroy you, steal your joy or laughter, a true and appreciative child of God will give thanks. A, a child of God will give thanks. And brethren, this morning, I pray that God will surprise you by performing his promises towards you, your household, and all that consign you in the mighty name of Jesus. His promises, the Bible says, they are yea and amen unto the glory of God by us. Not only Sarah, God surprised you in performing his promises. You know, when help comes from heaven, promises will be fulfilled. Manifestation will be witnessed. And God will be glorified. You see, God surprised Job by performing his promises. He will not forsake you in the mighty name of Jesus. That is one of his promises. He's your restorer. He will, be, he will restore everything that needs restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, in Job chapter 5, verse 22, the New King James Version, you shall laugh at destruction and famine. You know what it takes for you to laugh at destruction and famine. In other words, what these are meant to cause you, the pain, what the, you know, the fear, the, 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 the consuming fear that all these are meant to cause you, you laugh at them because you are an overcomer, because you are victorious. So that Job chapter 5 verse 22, you shall laugh at destruction and famine, and you shall not be afraid of the beast of the earth. And if you look at also that book of Job chapter 8 verse 21, he will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lip with rejoicing. If you follow the story and the account of Job, Job did laugh at the disastrous disease the devil orchestrated to destroy him. Job survived it. God restored him. Job laughed. And not just stopping there, Job thanked the Lord. Brethren, as stranger in the land, one thing we must all put effort to do, one act of stranger, is thanksgiving. And as we thank God today, may he accept all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, at the times we are now, I want to say our hearts and prayer reach out to all those who are sorrowful in this unprecedented time. But brethren, for each day, each week and month that passed, in this coronavirus pandemic and God has kept you and all yours to laugh at this pandemic this disaster you should truly laugh with gratitude be eternally grateful the virus and the situation we are going through people are already hurt but you know what things that are orchestrated to hurt you God will surprise you by performing his promises of turning them for your good Whatever we are going through presently, may the good that God destined for each and every one of us manifest out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. We are all coming out of this lockdown and we will come out stronger and we will come out with that zeal to pursue our salvation and mount with wings 
of an ego to soar to higher heights in the mighty name of Jesus. That is my prayer for us this morning. You see, God turned situation around for Joseph. He favored Joseph. God turns that table in favor of Joseph. You remember, you know, the story of Joseph, how he was sold by his brothers and all that. And how he ended life. And he told his brother expressly, if you look at Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, the International Children Bible, it reads, he told his brother that you, you meant to hurt me. You meant to hurt me, but God turned your evil into good. Whatever this pandemic is meant to inflict, you will see thousands will fall by your left hand side and by your right hand side, evil will not come near your dwelling place in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that is meant to be pain, God will turn it around to our good in the mighty name of Jesus. You think you've lost time, God will restore time. It's, more, it's like an incubating period. Whatever we are amassing now, we are going to come out stronger and victorious and ready to do exploit for our God in the mighty name of Jesus. You know that Bible verse read, you meant to hurt me, but God turned your evil into good. It was to save lives of many people and it is being done. You see, Joseph was internally grateful. That which has been designed to hurt you, God will turn into good in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, brethren, one, one message for us this morning, one message for you this morning, and one message for me this morning, which I want us to take serious and in faith, I want us to look at the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. It reads, I have not spoken in secret. I have not spoken in secret. I have not spoken in the dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Brethren, I tell you, this is the message, and I want us to get this. You and I are not seeking the Lord in vain. We are not seeking the Lord in vain, not for nothing. God will give his seeker, and I mean you. You are seeking God. You are you, you, you seated in your home, wherever you are listening. You know, God is reaching out to you. God's word is transforming you. God's word is changing you. Your heart is open to receive from God. You see, you are seeking God. It's one way of seeking God. I'm telling you, you're seeking God, brethren, this is not in vain. You're seeking God is not in vain. And for this, you have reasons to laugh. And that will be without fear. It will cause laughter in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, Jesus Christ even reaffirmed this. If you look at Luke chapter 6, verse 21, he said, Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. What hunger do you? You have a God, you serve a God who owns everything. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Weeping may enjoy for a night, but joy is certainly coming in the morning. Whatever that is happening is for this moment you shall laugh in the mighty name of Jesus. And my prayer, God will fill you and satisfy your hunger this month. Whatever you taste for, whatever you hung, whatever you hungry for, God will fill this month in the mighty name of Jesus. Weeping, it will wipe your tears and make you laugh in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, that is one thing, the one impact, the impact number one that we've discussed. When heaven costs help to be your portion the impact is you get amazed this will this will bet laughter your joy will be full another impact is god causing the sun to rise and shine on you when you have help from above if god causes his light to arise and shine on you if you look at uh, Psalm 121 verse 6. The sun shall not smite day by day, nor the moon by night. And this verse I'm reading to you, God met it. 
The sun will not smite you by day, neither the moon by night. Let your mind be settled on that. Other people might be smit, other people might be hot, but not you. That is God's word for you, and God meant it. And if you look at Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, I'll read the King James Version. But unto you that fear my name shall the sword of righteousness arise with healing in his wing. Unto you. You fear God, you reverence God, you worship God, you adore God, you live for God, you live a righteous life, you pursue your salvation with fear and trembling. Brethren, you fear God. But what he's saying, but unto you that fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wing. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the storm. I said that you fear God. And I'm sure you are one of us who fear the Lord. And brethren, if that is settled, by the special name that is above every other name, I dare prophesy and pray for you that the sun will arise for your sake this month in the mighty name of Jesus. This sun shall bring you healing. Sun shall bring you healing that will heal your body. Your body will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Your marriage will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Your finances will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. This sun will bring healing Son of righteousness that will shine upon you, will heal your finances, will heal your business. And whatever may be sick about you shall be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go forth into this month, this month of May, you will grow up in the mighty name of Jesus. That is my prayer. That is what we stand for. And God that we serve is able to bring this to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. I say receive that healing to your body to everything that needs healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And brethren, I want to encourage this morning, or permit me to put it to you as an instruction, that you should do according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. What do we have in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16? Let us turn our Bible there. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine this month. This month of May, let your light shine. Do not allow what I will call the benign leper syndrome to cause your light to dim. And you might be hearing the nine leper syndrome, but let me start and let us see the beginning of the leper syndrome. We will look at an account that is recorded in the book of Luke. We read from uh, chapter 17, and we read from verse 12 to 18. I'll read from the King James Version. Verse 12 said, And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. And we all know what the kind of life lepers they live, the kind of life lepers are exposed to. They are always outcasts. They are out there. They don't mingle with people in the society. You find them in the outskirts of the town. These were the lepers. They were stood afar. And verse 13 says, And they lift up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. You see, when you are in, when you are in a disadvantaged position, when all seems not to be well, brethren, learn to lift up your voice to the God who answers us when we call. This leper, they lift up their voice. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God. Verse 16, and he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 7, and Jesus answering said, We are dare not take cleansed, 
but where are the nine? Verse 8, the last verse said, There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Only stranger, the Samaritan, returned to glorify God. The remaining nine lepers, they succeeded in establishing the leprous syndrome of ingratitude. May that not be you, and that will never be any of us. A stranger in the land, we will always return when we have help from heaven, help from above. What we must do, if Jesus Christ is lifting up his voice, thanking God before doing things, when help come from above, brethren, let us be that stranger, that Samaritan, that return, and we shouldn't be seen as the suffering from that leopard syndrome of ingratitude. You know, from the story, I want you to take note of the following about the strange leper who returned to thank God. This leper, that one leper, he was considerate. He was considerate. He saw, remember the Bible verse we read, he saw, and when he saw and considered what Lord did for him, he saw it. After being cleansed, other might have turned their focus to things undone instead of thanking God for that which he has done. You see, brethren, sometimes when God come across you, send help to you, sometimes we don't thank him enough. We just move on and our eyes will start beholding the next thing God has not done. The next thing we are tarrying on him for, waiting for him for. Instead of spending time thanking God for that which he has done, we just change our focus immediately. All the other nine lepers, yes, they've been cleaned. Their focus is now on what is yet to be done. What have I not done? What, what, okay, I've, I've, not, I've been clean now. Oh, I need to start pursuing things. I need to build house. I need to do this. I need to do that. Brethren, let us be thankful like this one leper. He was considerate because he saw if you will be truthful to yourself, brethren, you will indeed count your blessing and name them one by one and see what the Lord has done for you. And thanksgiving, like we are doing today, will burst out from inside and you will genuinely thank God, just like this one leper. He raised his voice. He glorified God. He fell down at his feet and gave thanks. Another thing I want us to, to note from the story of this leper is that he was a Christian. His act, his act in the story we've just read, I will say correctly define who a Christian is. You see, for a Christian to return to Jesus, to worship and thank him, is a pleasure. It's only a pleasure to genuine Christian. It's never a pain. If it's when you are struggling to thank God, some people like today thanksgiving day they will not see any reason to thank god they will be saddled with what god has not done but a genuine christian should return you look forward to every single opportunity to thank god remember the bible said in everything we should thank god and i still want to tell you one more thing about this uh samaritan the samaritan we read the story the leper i said he was charitable. He did not only return to glorify God in worship. You know what he did? He also thanked him. If you follow that story, he glorified God. And he went down on his face and thanked God. Jesus Christ took note of this. Every thank we release to God is noted. And as we thank, remember that update. If you, if you thank somebody for something, there is every tendency that you will get more. May God give us that spirit to be grateful and thankful in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, what we have done here today, from these three points, made him a stranger. 
these three points we consider me and shouldn't you shouldn't me be a, you all of us all together be a stranger in this city also in this earth in this life where we enjoy help from above yes for the lepers they they encounter jesus christ you and me today we encounter help from above we are stranger here we are citizens of heaven when we cry on earth help come from above Shouldn't we be thankful? Shouldn't we be charitable? Shouldn't we be considerate? Return today, brethren. Give him glory and offer God thanks. May God accept your worship. And whatever you offer him as a stranger who return to thank him. I know you listening since watching since. The Holy Spirit might be ministering to you. You might just be looking back. You might have been counting your blessings since, seeing what God has done for you. And you can, you can come to the conclusion that I don't think I've thanked God enough. Brethren, the God we serve is a merciful God. It's a merciful God. I want you to thank Him. So, like I said, if you count your blessings one by one and see what God has done. God has kept you alive. God has caused your joy to be full even at this time. God has saved and protected your loved ones even for breath of life in your nursery. It's all amazing help from God. May God help all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, may God accept whatever thanks we will render to him. Then let me tell you expressly that Jesus knows that many will not thank him. Be a stranger this morning. Thank him for what he has done. From the help we do today, may God accept all of our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to tell him that, Father, indeed, I lift up my hand, I lift up my eyes, my heart reaches out to you in appreciation of every help that I've received from my bow. I give you thanks. All the amazement I've enjoyed, all the declaration, all the testimonies. Here we are on our Thanksgiving Day today. You have, proved, you, have, you have kept us. None of us is missing. This is yet a brand new month that you have, ushered, you have ushered us into. And I know as we journey in this month of May, help will continually come from heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. And as help come, brethren, tell the Lord that I will return thanks. I will be like that one leper. I will glorify your name. I will worship you. I will give thanks to you. And as you thank him, for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week, for the rest of the month. May continuous help come from heaven, and that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you for the time we've spent. We thank you for a beautiful day like this. We thank you for, you know, exposition. We thank you for enlightening us. We thank you for illuminating your message in our hearts. Daddy, everyone that have had what you've had for us this morning, let any of this not count against us in judgment. Let us run, like I said in the beginning, that as genuine children of God, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, because Holy Spirit, you will help us. We will make every effort to live and think and act the Christ in us. We will be children that are grateful, and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we bless your name. We give you praise. And as I bring this prayer to a close, I want to quickly pray for every one of our brethren that are born in the month of May. This is your birth month. God that has brought you this far, God that has journeyed with you to count calendar, 12 months is rolled by. He has ushered you into a brand new year. That God remained the same yesterday, today, and forever. We sang in our hymn that is faithful. He's faithful to keep you to the very end. He's faithful to cause line to fall in pleasant places for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless his name over your life. 
you will mount with with wings like an eagle and you will soar high this month in the mighty name of jesus everything that has been of hindrance obstacle before now god will go ahead of you and begin to make crooked way straight in the mighty name of jesus he will satisfy you with joy you will not be sick this month even if you are if you fall sick by his stripe healing will come your way in the mighty name of jesus we've talked about laughter this this morning god will cause laughter where people have concluded over your life and written you off. People wrote Sarah off at that age, but God gave Sarah a testimony and people laughed when they had it. This month of May that God has brought you into and this new year that God has brought you into, God will do an amazing thing in every one of your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, I bless your name. I give you praise. I worship you, Lord. Thank you for awesome time today. Thank you because you have enabled us. Thank you because this can only be you. Flesh and blood will fail us, but your spirit has enabled us. Daddy, as we round up today, let your presence be in our homes. Let your presence be with us, whatever we do, wherever we go, in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless your name and I give you praise. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. I really want to thank you for sitting through and watching. I know you are indeed blessed, blessed by a wonderful Sunday school time, awesome time of praise and worship. And I believe God that I serve that this message has met you well. And God will cause amazing things in your life. I bless God's name for all of our life. Thank you for watching. Uh, by Tuesday, We'll be having a Bible study. Our senior pastor will be teaching on Tuesday. He actually sat up the, the message today. He's sitting, listening. I know you are also blessed listening to the message. By Tuesday, he will be with us to do the Bible teaching. Uh, it's been nice time together. I'll pray, enjoy the rest of the Sunday. Celebrate the God today. Don't let Thanksgiving end as this broadcast end. Continue to celebrate God. Continue to thank Him. Continue to bless His name. And He will forever give you reason to laugh in the mighty name of Jesus. Until Tuesday when the senior pastor will be coming with the Bible study, I want to wish you well. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. What you have benefited today, share it with friends. Just one person might be blessed and heaven will take the glory. Until Tuesday, remain blessed, and God bless you.